Hello everyone, this is Cynthia on Embracing His Word. Well, one of my heart's desire and part of my calling is to teach the younger women and to also to mentor the younger women. So today I'm doing a teaching on how to pray for your future husband, how to pray for your future husband. So my very first prayer point is that your future husband will have a heart after God's own heart. Why is it important that your future husband have a heart after God's own heart? Now let's talk about David. Why did God call David a man after God's own heart? David had absolute faith in God. David knew early on in his life that God was to be trusted and obeyed. So as we see in the scripture, David's faith pleased God and God rewards David for his faithfulness. And so you want your husband to be a man of strong faith. So let's go to God in prayer and just say a little short prayer on his behalf. Father, I thank you. I pray for the future husband. Father, I pray that Lord, you just begin to touch his heart and Lord, that he will be a man that just dives into your word. He reads it. He meditates upon your word and he learns how to apply your word and to walk by faith. And so Father, I commit Lord, the future husband unto you, Father. I pray for every viewer, Father, that's desiring to learn how to pray for their future spouse. So Father, I pray, Lord God, that you will just, Lord, encamp, Lord, your loving kindness, let it overflow in his heart, in his soul, and spirit. And I thank you, Lord, that you're teaching this future husband how to be a man of strong faith. So prayer point number two, that as a single man, you want your future husband to learn how to lean on and trust in the Lord in times of difficulties so that he will know the value of commitment in marriage when times are good and when times are bad. This will make a very big difference in your marriage. So let's I want you to begin to pray for your future husband to learn how to really lean on and trust in the Lord. James chapter 1 verse 3 through 4 says, Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect. That word means uh, mature and complete, lacking in nothing. So you want to pray that your future spouse learn how to really lean into the Lord and trust him. And another verse that I would like you to just focus and meditate upon as you pray for your future husband, it comes from Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verses 5 through 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. So um, when your future husband is feeling overwhelmed, burdened, or battered by life circumstances, he will have the word already rooted in his heart and in his soul. And he will wa walk by faith and not by sight. So let's just begin to pray that over your future husband. Father, I just lift up the young women that are desiring to learn how to pray for their future husband. I pray, Lord God, that their future husband will have a heart that's full of your word because when they read their, your word, they learn how to lean on you, trust in you, and to truly walk by faith. So Father, we commit that future husband unto you, Father. Lord, give him the ability and the willingness Lord, to always stay in your word, 
and to lean on you and trust in you. So point number three is we want, want your future husband to learn the value of serving others and letting go of selfishness and self-centeredness. You know, when you live as a single person, there's there's that tendency to be very selfish and self-centered. So you want to start praying on the behalf of your future husband that he learns the value of serving others and letting go of selfishness and self-centeredness. We live in a world that actively encourages us to be self-centered. And so we're also born with that, that kind of nature to be selfish and self-centered. We're regularly and bombarded with com commercials and slogans telling us, you deserve a mean day. Do you treat yourself? Do what feels right by you. There's nothing wrong with uh, treating yourself or doing some of the things that you desire to do, but you want to remember that we should mostly be other-centered, not self-centered. While there's nothing wrong with practicing a little bit of self-care, we want to be careful that our mindset uh, doesn't lead into a lifestyle of selfishness and self-centeredness. So Jesus didn't call his followers to live for themselves, but rather he called his followers to pursue a life of humility and service. So you want to pray for your future husband to learn the importance of serving others and letting go of selfishness and self-centeredness. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to pray on the behalf of the young women that are desiring to learn about praying for their future husband. So Father, I pray that that future husband is not uh, selfish, he's not self-centered, but Lord, he's learning how to serve others. He's learning how to love you and to serve you first of all. And as he learned these things, Father, serving you and loving you, he will learn how to serve and love others. So Father, we commit him unto you, Father. I pray that you will begin to work in this area of his life, teaching him the value of serving others in Jesus' name. So the next prayer point that I have is that you want to begin to pray that your future husband live a life of purity and integrity. One of the young, one of the scriptures that I loved as a young adult and while still in college, the Lord uh, places on my heart to read the scripture, memorize it, meditate upon it. This comes from Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. Not only memorize it, but apply it in my life. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you that by testing you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect this is a, a these are scriptures that help you to align your life with Jesus Christ if you want to live a life you want your future husband to live a life of holiness to live a life of purity to live a life of integrity he needs to be able to focus upon these kinds of scriptures and incorporate it into his heart and soul and spirit by reading, meditating, and applying it on a daily basis. Praying that your future husband has established boundaries in order to guard his heart against impurity. That your future husband walks with deep reverent fear of God and that he honors him at all times regardless of what the cost may be. You see if you have a future husband 
that's already put it into practice, the reverent fear of God, he will, he will put that into practice in his marriage. So let's go to God in prayer that God would just do a deep work, continual work in your future husband's heart. You know, um, when Joseph was um, in, he was in prison because uh, his brother sold him off, it says that despite the attempts of Potiphar's wife to seduce him, Joseph feared God and had a deep resolve, a solid conviction that to yield to her was not an option. And so you want to pray these kinds of prayers uh, that uh, given in to sexual uh, temptations, given in to any kind of impurity, this is not an option for your future spouse. So Joseph, he successfully fled from sexual immorality, even though his commitment to doing the right thing was costly. Because of her false uh, accusations, that, that is a part of his wife, uh, made false accusations against Joseph. He was thrown into prison for some time. But God was always with him. God never forsook him. And that God, even while he was in prison, God prospered him. You see, when when you go through difficult trying times, there's a reason and there's a purpose behind uh, why you're in those difficult times. God used those hard, difficult times to prune us, to train us, to mature us. And so Joseph, he was eventually promoted to prime minister of Egypt. So I want you to see the importance of your future husband living a, a pure life, a life of integrity. So let's go to before God and just begin to pray in his behalf. Father, I thank you for the young women, Lord, that are praying for their future husband. Lord, they want their future husband to live a life of purity and integrity. So Father, I pray, oh God, that their hearts are humbled under your mighty hand because they have the reverent fear of you. They're choosing purity. They're choosing to walk in integrity. They're choosing to honor you regardless of who is looking at them. They honor you in secret, Father. And I say thank you, Lord. Strengthen them in their innermost bend, Lord, to stand strong and to be the man of God that you have called them to be, to walk in purity and to walk, Lord, in such a way that it always pleases you. We commit these things to you, Father, in Jesus' name. I have given you four prayer points to pray for your future husband. Number one, that your future, future husband will have a heart that is after God's own heart. Number two, prayer point, uh, you want to pray that your uh, future husband learns how to lean on and trust in the Lord in times of difficulty so that he will begin to mature and learn how to endure in difficult times. Prayer point number three, that he is learning the value of serving others and letting go of selfishness and self-centeredness. Prayer point number four, that he will live a life of purity and integrity. So when you put this into practice and you're praying for your future husband, God sees that you are dependent upon him. You're putting your faith and your trust and reliance in him. And God will bless you and reward you for taking this time and this sacrifice to pray for your future husband. God bless you. I will do another video on uh, about four more prayer points on praying for your future husband. So look forward to that. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, like the video. Also share the video. Be blessed and have a good day. Thank you.